the end of the day, selling is transferring a feeling. If you don't have the feeling, you can't transfer it. If you exactly. don't have a good, positive feeling, dude, you're an actor. You have to sell and run your business from a place of positivity. And however you get there, God bless you. Welcome to the Pete Primo Show. It is episode 132, and we are talking to Greg Birch about mindset is everything. And I cannot wait to get this show started, but let me first pay the bills. If you haven't got my book, Sell a Million, what are you waiting for? Over 101 tips on how to sell more than a million in furniture and mattresses. The best compliment I got on my book is from my friend, Doug Stewart. Doug said, take the word furniture or mattresses out of this book. It's just a great marketing book. And uh, thank you very much for that, um, Doug. And uh, I would like to thank my friends at the Mattress Industry Network who sponsored the show. Steve, I appreciate you. It was great seeing, in you, seeing you in Vegas, Steve. I'm glad you were being able to get around. And if you are in the mattress industry, we want you in this group. It's a free Facebook group, over 2,000 strong. If you want to learn how to build, market, sell, and succeed in the mattress industry, this is the place for you. It is a great group. It is run by retailers for the benefit of the entire industry. Whether you're on the wholesale side, retail side, we want you in the group. Join today. And uh, I couldn't be more thankful for your sponsorship. Thank you, Steve. And thank you, the Mattress Industry Network Group. And without a further ado, do let me bring Greg Birch in. Greg is a fitness coach, but he's a sales guy. He's a business guy. He owns uh, Delta Fit, and he is the president of Delta Financial. This guy has done more than I, I, I expect to see some gray hairs, but there's no gray hairs. So. Uh, my beard's pretty gray. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you for your service. Uh, I've seen seen some of your shows in the past, and I and, and many of in my audience appreciate your service and uh, we're very thankful for you. Greg, mindset is everything and it couldn't be more true in the environment we find ourselves in. Right now, uh, I'm just coming back from a show in Vegas and, and there were two accounts there that are having their best month ever while some stores are closing down. And I'm thinking what's the difference? And, and I can see some merchandising differences and I can see some advertising differences, but more than anything, it's really their mindset. And I'd love for you to talk about that. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Pete, first off, thank you for having me on the show. I appreciate it. I always love pleasure to try to provide value on any podcast I can. And, uh, no, you're absolutely right. Um, you know, I've been in sales now since, uh, 2017 when I got out of the military and I, I took me some time, you know, I, I like most people going into the sales for the first time, uh, had some, had some challenges. It was, it's a, it's a, uh, steep learning curve. Right. Yeah. And it wasn't until about a year and a half in that I realized that, um, you know, sales has very basic fundamentals that people have to follow. And one of them really centers around personal development and, and keeping your mind in the right, in the right state, you know, have that, a very positive state in mind. And, um, it, it changed everything when I, when I started to apply those simple fundamentals to my business and, and how I was able to succeed and get to where I am today. And since a, most, of, you know, most, most of our, our audience is either business owners, mm -hmm. sales reps, um, or sales RSAs that work on the retail floor. Um, I know we're here to talk about mindset, but can you just touch on the fundamentals? Because I love when people talk about the fundamentals of sales, because I think it's so important. Sometimes forgive the football analogy, ladies, if any of you are listening, but we, we start to worry about flea flickers and double reverses instead of blocking and tackling. Mm -hmm. I love talking about blocking and tackling. Will you do that for just a minute or two? Oh, I'd love to. I'd love to. So I, I, what I'll do is I'll, I'll kind of teach it when I have new sales reps come on how I teach them. I'm, sure. I still, I'm still uh, 
very much ingrained in the military in the sense that that's where I came from. It's where a lot of my experience is. And so I always revert or, or compare it to things that I learned in the military. Sure. And so um, I, I compared sales and in, in, in the the additional uh, the tactics, strategies that you got to do in order to be successful to land navigation in the military. So in land navigation, for those of you who don't know, you know, they, <clears throat> when you're in the military, they'll, they'll take you, they'll put you into a, uh, um, in the middle of the woods and you'll be at this one point that will be, you know, you'll, you'll have the exact location, which is called an eight digit grid coordinate. And they'll say, Hey, here, here's your current grid coordinate. They'll give you a map, a protractor, a pencil and a compass and say, Hey, here's the points you got to go find. They'll give you say three, four, five points that you have to go find and then get your way back. And so, you first thing you do is you plot exactly where you are right on the map. So you can see on the map, okay, that's me. Then you start to plot all the different points that you're going to, and you use a, you use a straight line in order to determine what the azimuth is so that you know, when you're using your compass, what's the azimuth, what's the compass heading I'm going to be going to get to this specific location. Then you also determine the distance on the map. So, you know, it's going to be, you know, a hundred meters, 500 meters, 800 meters, whatever. So those simple things are really key when it comes to sales. So first off, what do you have to do? You have to know where you're at, right? You have to know your specific location. Second thing you gotta do is you have to determine where you wanna go. And those are the points that you're, that you're trying to find in your map. And then you have to calculate the actual route. That's the, the azimuth, that's the distance, and that's the actual path you're gonna take. So you have where you're at, where you wanna be, and the path to get there right? So where you're at is understanding your current metrics, your numbers. This is, this is actually tracking every single piece of data that you can. Okay. If you're working off of leads, how many leads are you getting on a daily basis? How often are you calling them? How many dials are you doing? How many people are picking up when the people are pick up? Are they, are, how many appointments are you setting versus what objections are you getting? track those objections that you're getting. How often do you get each one of those objections, right? All the way to how many appointments are you actually sitting with when you sit with those appointments? How many pitches are you giving? How many sales are you getting? Understanding all these metrics tells you exactly where you are as a sales professional. You under, it paints the picture, right? Where you want to be is the goal. Let's say that you have a sales target that you're trying to hit. Like I want to get X amount of commissions by X time. I want to be able to start getting $40,000 of commission a month by this month. Okay. The, the route that you go there, that's the actions you have to take. And those actions are going to be knowing is when you know your numbers, it's going to be how many appointments are you're going to actually have to get. And there's a, you can really do backwards planning from that point, but it's also this, the daily trainings, the, uh, going to, uh, getting a coach or getting a mentor. It's, you know, listening to podcasts, reading books to give you the expertise and give you the skills necessary to get where you want to go. Right. So when you break it all down, the reason why you want to get where you're at or understand where you're at, because it, it paints a picture eventually, what you'll get to say, okay, well, I know if I do X activity, if I do get this many leads and I do this many dials, I know it's going to generate this many closes because I know because of the backwards planning, I know I'm going to get this many closes because I know I'm going to end up sitting with approximately this many people. And here are my sales ratios, right? And then it just becomes a math problem at that point. So if, if I know that if I get this many leads, it's going to equal this many sales, that equals approximately this much commission. I want to get this commission. I need to get this many sales. That's going to dictate, or it's going to come to the come to the uh, uh, equation of this many leads, this many dials, et cetera, et cetera. That's the point of doing of understanding like the sales basics, because there's too often that people don't track those small numbers, right? And that's, that's what I've ran into in my time with training sales individuals and with running a sales organization is that they don't actually track their numbers. And a lot of times I'll sit down with people and they'll be they're like, Oh yeah, I know my numbers. And so when I actually ask them very pointed questions about, okay, well, what's the number one objection you get? And if I were to give you 10 leads, how many times are you going to get that objection? Right? 
they're like, I, I don't know. Okay, then you don't know your numbers that well. <laughs> you need to know it's so backwards and forwards because you're tracking it so much that you know, because it, it paints the picture. Where are your hangups in your business? How often are you losing sales and why, right? And and so um, that's really the mindset. And, and and I guess the mindset piece where it comes in is the thought or the understanding of thinking like, I, I don't have to do this, right? I am, uh, 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 I'm special in some way, right? <laughs> like, oh, I don't have to track this. I got it. I'm good. And that's where the mindset piece comes in. And that's what I learned is I used to, I used to think that way too. I used to forego doing those basic things because I felt I didn't think it was important. And I didn't think it was actually going to have an end impact on how many sales I was doing. But what I realized is that that, that thought of like, of like, oh, I'll, I'll, I'm not going to do this. I'm going to focus on this, that, or the other is what it really came down to is I thought I was special. I thought that somehow those, the same rules that apply to every salesperson, but they somehow did not apply to me because I had some special innate, innate talent, or there was something about me that I, I could, I could outwork it. And you can't, you can't outwork it. And so get out of the head, get out of the mindset and get it out of your head that you can somehow recreate the wheel for an industry that's been around for decades, for, for hundreds of years of any sales industry, right? And you have to follow the same exact procedures, processes, steps as every other successful salesperson out there. You know, does, does that make sense, Pete? Yeah. Listen, you, you've touched on so many great things here. I'm going to start unpacking some of this stuff. And the first thing I'd like to say, if you're a sales rep, re-listen to what he just said because you know you have office days where you dial in for dollars and then you have your belly to belly days where you're visiting the stores i i'm just gonna say this it's gonna sound brutal it's gonna sound old but it's the truth the more activity you have the more success you have i'm sorry i wish i could tell you that if you say blah, 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 magic sentence, or you sprinkle fairy dust on this drink and drink it, you're going to magically have sales. That's not the way it works, guys. And I want to kind of bring this back to store owners. So you're, I know some of you guys went to sleep when he said, track your data, but you as a store owner, your income and calls, how many of those people, when you are getting those calls are coming into the store? Are you tracking that? How many people are coming into your store? Are you tracking what you're, what you're selling? And why aren't they, buy, when they don't buy, why aren't they buying? Mm -hmm. Don't let yourself off the hook too easy. And I, going back even further into some of your comments, you glossed over it like it was nothing because it's so ingrained in you, Greg. But this idea of hiring a coach, having mentors, being a student, being open to learning. Mm. It's huge. As long as you are swinging your bat and you're on the field and you're competing in business, you need to be a student. And I'm sorry if that sounds a little too brutal for you, but you need to be a student. There's nobody that I have ever met in my life that was so smart that they couldn't learn. And the smartest guys that I know are all students and they ask me questions and I'm like, no, don't ask me questions. I'm going to ask you questions, dude, you're smarter than me. And you know what? Sometimes I get done with a conversation with someone who's literally 10 times smarter than me. And they're thanking me up and down for my insights. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I just learned so much from this dude or do that. And they're thanking me and I'm like, that's crazy. And then it goes back to always be learning. I mean, we, we have to always have that, that openness that I can learn something and I can get better and I can ask better questions. And <laughs> folks, Greg said this point blank, but I'm just, I just want to unpack it a little bit. If you're getting the same objections again and again, and you are, you have to learn how to handle those objections. 
objections that you get on a routine basis, they have to be countered in your presentation. They have to be countered before you get them. You have to answer them before you get them. There's something lacking in your presentation. There's something lacking in your qualifications. Uh, it could of, also be, it could also be um, I found a lot of times that salespeople, um, they have a perception like, oh, all these clients, don't, they're not, they, they're not going to have money. Like they can't purchase. They're not going to purchase. And so they automatically think it and then they get price objections all the time. Mm. It's like they pull it, they pull it to them. Yes. They, they, they absolutely attract that to them. Yeah. And so here we are halfway through 2023. We've got the majority of stores that I call on are 20 to 30 percent down uh there's a good percentage that are fighting really really hard to stay even or five to ten percent down and then i've got a few overachievers uh literally two stores in you know four or five states that are crushing i mean crushing it and both of them are absolute students of the game and, and they listen to just like you suggested they listen to podcasts they go to seminars they hire coaches they do everything they can to make themselves better they're constantly learning so how do you get somebody who may not be as open to learning as they should be greg to kind of open up and be willing to become a student again. How do you do that? Yeah, that's a, that's a challenging one. <laughs> yeah. If we, had, if we had a surefire way, I think we'd be a much better place, place uh, <laughs> in terms of all businesses across, you know, every industry. Um, you know, if it's, it, it depends on, I guess, on the level, you know, when it's a young salesperson or if it's a salesperson in my organization that's just doing things the wrong way and, and I can see it and they're just not listening, then uh, usually I'll show them. Like people, people will follow individuals that they see doing the work, right? Or they see uh, having the success. And so um, usually I would take that individual salesperson and be like, hey, you're having this trouble. Um, you're saying you're doing X, Y, Z. You're saying you're tracking it. Well, let's do it together. I want to see it. You know, Ooh. I want to see it firsthand. And actually sitting with them, going over dials with them, doing dials with them, letting them see me and hear me on the phone. Um, doing appointments with them, letting them see me actually in a sales presentation. And, and when I can give them some success or show them some success hand in hand together, then they're more likely to be like, okay, I'll follow. Like I'll, you, you tell me to do something, I'll do it. Right. Yeah. You know, that, that is so good. That is so good, Greg. Uh, I'm going back in my head now and, and listen, dude, I was that young cocky guy. And I'll never forget, Dave Kozakowski, wherever you are, thank you for stomping on my neck and kicking me in the butt. So Dave is a sales manager at a place that is actually doing a GOB. I'd only been in sales for a couple of months. And he just, I'm in there, I'm eating my lunch and I'm by myself. And he comes in, he goes, can I talk to you? And I said, sure, Dave. Um, and he shuts the door. He puts his hands on his hips. The last person to put their hands on their hips to talk to me was my football coach. And before that, it was my mother. And I was in trouble both times, dude. <laughs> and, and he puts his hands on his hips. He goes, I don't know what the F you think you're doing. He goes, but I know more about you than you think I know. And I'm like, what do you know? He goes, I know you were a two-time All-American in football in college. He goes, I read the papers. I go, you didn't get to be a two-time All-American, Pete, by being a half-ass. And you're being a half-ass. Sometimes I see sparks of greatness in you. And sometimes I just see a lazy, petulant kid that doesn't want to work. So what do you want to do? You want to make this thing work or not? If you want to make this thing work, I'm going to help you and, and I'm going to do everything I can to make you the best salesperson. But if you just want to be a half ass, just let me know now and I won't bother with you. And I almost like got tears in my eyes and I'm like, 
man, this guy just kicked my butt and I needed it. I said, Dave, I'm all in. He goes, good. Finish that and come out on the floor. We've got work to do. And that was one of the best things that, and what he made me do, Greg, is follow him around. He goes, plop pillows, pretend like you're doing something else, but you listen to every GD word I say. Every word I say, Pete, is not an accident. Every word I say is on purpose. You listen to what they're saying, listen to what I'm saying, and learn. This is the best way to learn. So I followed him around. So this let's do it together that you just, it just triggered a memory that I had lost completely. I mean, we're talking about 30 some years ago, yeah. that memory. And it's right then I just looked at him and I said, I'm all in. And he said, good, finish your sandwich and let's go. We're going out on the floor and we're working. And uh, that sometimes you have to stop somebody on in their tracks you have to let them know where their shortcoming is. And you also have to let them know that you see something in them mm -hmm. and that, you know, we need to work and I'm going to go to the ends of the earth for you and with you, but you got to tell me you want this. You know, if you tell me you want this, I'm all in, but if not, you know, Maybe, maybe there's something else for you to do in this world other than be in sales because sales is not for the faint of heart. It's mm -hmm. not easy. If it wasn't easy, you couldn't make a fortune doing it. Mm -hmm. Right. No, you're so, absolutely right. Let's do it together. I absolutely love that. You're working uh, with a business owner who is having a difficult time kind of getting out of his or her own head. And, you know, a lot of our business owners, you know, there's four or five people in the company and they're the, the janitor, they open it up. They're the secretary and there's some delivery guys and there might be one other sales person. And they kind of, they're getting overwhelmed, Greg, and having a hard time prioritizing, um, and it seems like when I walk into the stores that they're just totally, their mind is kind of everywhere trying to solve problems. What would be your advice to a store owner who feels like he or she's getting sucked into all kinds of minutia that they shouldn't be. And they're having a hard time fighting to create the time and the space to take care of their own mindset their own attitude uh -huh. and create the time to be strategic with their business, because those are two areas that I think people have a hard time. Store owners have a hard time with. Mm -hmm. So that's a, that's a great question. Um, you know, in, in that specific example, I'm going to add a little bit to it just to kind of sure to, to <laughs> kind of paint a picture. So let's say with this business owner um, that, on top of all the problems, like the problems that you listed, that they also have, like their sales are down, um, they have a retention problem, and um, they aren't delegating very well. So they feel like they constantly have to be at the business all the time. So they like they, they they're never getting um, any any time to decompress, uh, and it's affecting their personal life, right? So. Most people that I've seen, especially when it comes to business that I've worked with, it, if I were to tell them, you know, more on a per personal development side on how to manage their life better, they would look at it as like, I just don't have time for that. It's that's too that's too easy of a of a solution. It's not that there's something else. Like I'll do that when I have the time, and they'll push it off. But what they don't realize is that that is actually the most important thing. So what I would probably do in order to get belief, I, was, I would help them with like the lowest hanging fruit problem that they have. Maybe it's a retention thing, right? Um, and I would, I would work on any given area that's a problem within the business and I would give them some strategies to apply that would may have a very quick turnaround and they would have an impact almost immediately so that when they applied it, they see the impact and now they've created belief within them. So then they look at me and say, oh man, the advice you gave me was really good, thank you. 
Um, and then I said, okay, well, let's go look and work on the other things. And now I've built a little bit of bona fides with them so that they realize that <clears throat> ultimately the end state, the problem with the, with the business is you, the business owner, right? If you're not managing your life, the prop, the, the right way, if you're mismanaging your life in terms of your schedule, in terms of not being able to uh, delegate, whatever it may be it's going to have an effect in your business. Those are interchangeable. Like how, I, I'm very much of a believer, like how you do one thing is how you do all things. And if your life's kind of in disarray, then your business is going to be in disarray. So I would, I would build up so much to bona fides and then I would give them some things for their own personal life that would help them, that would get them to, um, build discipline and, and strengthen their mindset. Right. And, and, and so I would tell them to start reading daily. I would give them good business books and be like, Hey, you got to read daily, you know, not a lot, but just enough to start teaching yourself new skills because that's what this is all about. Next is I would have them do physical fitness every day because it's really healthy. And I don't care what business you're in, but if you, I've, i the people that I've worked with, the ones that are more attuned to their physical fitness, they typically are better in their every area of life just because it, you don't have to go become a bodybuilder, but, um, you know, going out and actually having some kind of physical activity every single day, 45 minutes a day, it really helps. I mean, it, it, in such a tremendous way, it helps your mindset. It helps your, it helps, um, uh, get rid of stress, anxiety. Um, it, it, floods your body with natural dopamine, right? It helps you to problem solve. And so when you do this consistently, it actually has a transcending effect in other areas of life. So having them do this on top of it, right? They'll start to notice those, those, uh, uh, the benefits of the physical activity in other areas of life within a couple of weeks. And it's just, it's, it's a it's a progressive adding of different things in order to improve that business owner's life and give them more control of their life of the things that they can't control, which is going to empower them in their business. Wow. There's a lot there to unpack. I'm just going to jump on this physical activity uh, piece of it. When I was younger and I jumped into sales and I really got into it. I kind of let myself go physically and probably for a good 10 years. And then I realized that I needed to change. I needed to do something. And of course I've gone through different. I went, I went through a midlife crisis where I became a competitive power lifter eventually benching 705 and total in 2200 and and then realizing you know i can't continue to do this and i really need to lose all this weight that i put on on purpose which was ridiculous and then got back into just walking lifting moderate weights i got into crossfit that's been very good for me do something every day Greg said it so well, you don't have to lift huge weights, but you do need to lift weights. Actually, uh, yeah. there's nothing better for you. Uh, you don't have to lift heavy weights. You don't have to do it dangerously. You need to do it safely. You need to do it under supervision. I'd recommend that you get a coach or at least somebody that you know or respect that can help you with a proper form. Uh, shout out to Justin Trombo, chest up, hips back. Don't sink down when you do your squats. I, I, gave, I, I gave them too many cues and then I got it down to two cues. Push your hips back first, chest up, keep your chest up. And there we go. Physical activity every day is huge in not only imposing your will on your life, because let's face it, if you're waking up every day at seven or eight and you have to get your physical activity and you're probably going to have to wake up a little bit earlier unless you've just got unnecessary things that you can cut out. And that's okay too. That's great if you can do that. But a lot of people look at me and go, Pete, I'm already doing blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, wake up earlier. I I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's, it, it's important enough and it makes you feel so good that you really should do it. And you know, um, this, the other piece of this physical activity is huge. 
So you as a store owner have a lot of stress on you and it's the greatest stress relief in the world. And uh, taking walks after you eat for 10 to 20 minutes, 10 to minutes to half an hour helps your digestion, helps everything, helps your metabolism stay up. You don't have to be spending hours and hours in the gym, but you do need to get some activity on a regular basis and it's going to make you feel better. It's going to make you smarter. And I know I'll oh, Pete now, now you've done it. No, it's going to make you smarter. Your, your, your mental acuity is increased when you're physically fit versus when you're not, it's just a fact. So well, think about it like this. Like, you're, let's say you're a store owner right now. Okay, you're a store owner. You're down thirty percent this year than you are any previous year. Um, you're not working out. Okay, you're waking up at seven, eight o'clock. Um, you have to rush to the office. You're eating whatever it is that you can. You know, you're you're not even making time for proper nutrition. So you're eating out. You're eating crap food. You're gaining weight because you're not active and you're eating processed uh, or or you're eating out all the time. Can you tell me that you think that you're in the best possible mental state that you're able to problem solve and you don't have other things that are on your mind subconsciously? You can't because you, you get out of the shower, you look in the mirror and you realize that your gut looks a little bit bigger and you're just like, oh, I'll deal with it later. That's not what that's that's on your mind. You know, you're, you're like you're, you're eating this crap food that, that gives you indigestion. That's on your mind. You're waking up and you barely have time to really get a, a nutritious to, to go get a workout. You're like literally racing to the office. No time to actually have in the morning, clear, clear head in order to problem solve. You're, you're, you're stacking the deck against yourself. You just are right. And, and what is a lot of people look at it and they're like, well, it can't be that simple. And like, I got these other things and I got to look, get to bed earlier, get your seven, eight hours of sleep, wake up early, get to the gym, do a 45 minute workout, Control what you eat because you start to control these little things. I promise you that the, the controlling of the parts of your business become easier because you're giving yourself the ability. You, you're also it's also your internal reputation. Like when everywhere you show up, when you're at the when you're at the store and you're slowly gaining weight, and when customers come in and they see you, they see you. Your physical rep representation, who you show up in the world as, is your internal reputation with yourself. It's what you tell the world. This is what I think about myself. I don't even care so much about my body, which is the only body I'm ever going to get, that I'm going to take care of it. I'm going to say, screw it. What does it say about your business? Right? It's, th this and, is and, and, the, and the irony is most of my dealers are in the mattress business. And in the mattress business, what are we talking about? guys and gals, we're talking about the wellness stool, three-legged stool. And, and what is it? Rest, nutrition, exercise. And if you're failing two out of the three, I'm sorry, Greg said it. You're a, a representation of what? Are you a representation of what a successful person looks like who is well-rested, who takes care of him or herself? And should I be taking advice from this person who looks this way, or should I be taking advice from somebody else who seems like they're taking care of themselves? Got to think about that one, guys. I, I know that's very a simple. Little, yeah. <laughs> so, sometimes so simple, we want to dismiss it, but I would recommend that you don't. Let's, you know, we, we, you touched about on this. Let's talk about feeding your mind positives. You know, you, you mentioned, um, uh, podcasts and, and, you know, there were no podcasts when I was a kid, if you wanted, uh, you know, there, there was basically seminars, physical seminars that you could go to. And I, I remember going to see Zig Ziglar in a stadium and, and other speakers. And, and that was great. And reading sales books, my, my first sales book I have right there. I, I was so bad at sales. My, 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 my wife got me a sales book because, you know, we're, we're basically starving to death. It's like, here, <laughs> educate yourself. Please, you please read this book and please start making some money. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So today here's a crazy thing, Greg today, more than ever, there's so much information available to people. Where would you start? 
you know, somebody agrees with you. They say, Greg, okay, I'm, you're right. I need to feed my mind. How do, what is your prescription for someone to start to feed their mind uh, some positives to make themselves? Um, and, and maybe it's not even what they should be feeding their mind. Maybe there's some weeds they need to pull out first. I, I'll let you have at it yeah. your own way. Yeah, yeah. So, no, you're absolutely right. Um, I, it's almost like think about it like a sculptor, right? And when a sculptor is is trying to um, chisel away everything that's unwanted to have to have the the sculpture inside that he they have see in their mind, um, they're they're chipping away everything that is unnecessary. And that's that's when you are developing yourself and you're trying to become the best business owner, the best salesperson, the best whatever. It's sometimes it starts instead of with, I'm looking for what I have to do. You can start with, I'm looking for what I need to get rid of to open up. So uh, maybe, maybe you don't know what it is exactly like who you are. I'll use it in broad spectrum. Like who, like what's important to you? Who are you? What do you want to do in life? What's your passion? What's your purpose? Well, maybe you don't know, but you do know things that you're not right. So you start getting rid of those things that you're not. And it's the same way in your mindset of getting rid of those weeds that are in your mind that are preventing you. Um, and it could be just limiting beliefs from past experiences that you've had in your life. So getting rid of a lot of those things, getting rid of the, uh, the vices, uh, the staying up late, the drinking alcohol, um, the overeating, the binge eating, the watching too much Netflix, whatever it is, whatever your vice is, start getting, start getting rid of that. Right. And what it's going to do is it's going to give you, it's going to empower you to start opening up your schedule and your time. Cause you realize like anyone that says, I don't have time to work out. My business is too busy. You, I, all you've told me is that you don't control your calendar whatsoever because every single person on this planet has enough time to, to work out. You know, uh, it, it, uh, even if, if people like Elon Musk can do, you know what I'm saying? Like no one's as busy as some of these, like I can use uh, multiple different influencers or high level entrepreneurs that are in like nine, nine figures plus and they work out and, and that's not us, right? We're, we're down much lower. So it's really that we lost the ability to control our schedule. So that's what I would do is, is I always start off with like, actually look at your schedule and see what you're doing on a daily basis. Do a true time audit. And what a true time audit means is that you literally got to write down every 15 minutes what you're actually doing. I don't care if you're just staring out in space and you're trying to solve world hunger, whatever in your, in your mind, you still need to write that down, what you did for those 15 minutes. And actually go through the the, the your, your calendar on a maybe a two to three days of doing this and look at what you're doing on a daily basis. And it'll become pretty clearing pretty, pretty clear and obvious. Like these are the things that I, do, that are wasting my time that aren't moving the needle forward in my life or in my business. And you can start to get rid of them. And am I saying to never watch Netflix again? No, I'm not, but there's a, there's a season of growth and there's, there's a season where you can actually, and, and when you're, when you can harvest, right? So start with that. Next is what I do for, for my specific, for me, for mindset, what helps me a lot is listen to podcasts and reading books. I read every single day and I'm always picking up new books. Um, I started this a couple of years ago and it's, it was a complete game changer. And, uh, you know, quite frankly, most people have not finished a book. Some people will read, but they don't finish a book from start to finish. Right. And, and they're not readers, daily readers uh, uh, to consuming as much content as possible. Um, you know, there's a lot of great books out there on business. There's a lot of great, and most of it, once you've read, you know, a few of them, you start to see very common themes, right? Just somebody else is repackaging it in their own way. Um, but sales books, um, business books, mindset books, you know, uh, most like most business owners are certain books that I would recommend that they read. Uh, it, like one of one of them, uh, my favorite book is The Magic of Thinking Big by David Schwartz. It's just a fantastic book for sales professionals and business owners, right? Mm -hmm. um, obviously, Napoleon Hill's Think and Grow Rich, like that's like the Bible of for for business owners, for entrepreneurs, right? Um, you know, for sales for sales books, I like uh, um, Never Split the Difference by Chris Foss. That's a great book on negotiations, and it and the tactics within it helped me in my sales tremendously, you know? Um, and another one, Start With No by Jim Camp, which is a very in a very similar vein, um, which is a negotiation book, right? So getting to reading the right books, and really you can't go wrong, but there's so many people out there that would freely be like, oh yeah, 
read this, read this, read this, that are readers that I would go re reach out to. You can reach out to me as well. I have a whole, on my Delta Financial Life website, I got a whole reading list with different books that I've read that I highly recommend. But if you ever reached out, if anyone ever reached out to me and say, hey, here's my challenge, what book's a good book? I've probably read something that's that can help within those realms. So um, when it comes to podcasts, honestly, I don't listen to music. So I listen to podcasts. I listen to podcasts when I'm lifting. I listen to podcasts when I'm anytime I'm in the car. I listen to podcasts like when I first wake up in the morning. I put on a podcast. Um, and everyone has different podcasts that they like. I try to keep my podcast towards business and personal development. So, you know, I listen to people like uh, Andy Frisella. Um, I listen to Bedros Koulian. Uh, I listen to Ed Milet. You know, um, but these are people that I look up to in business that are that are uh, an inspiration for me. I'm also part of Arte, which is owned by Andy and Ed. And, and so I'm part of a group where I get mentored by them as well. Highly recommend doing books like that or doing podcasts like that because it's there's so much information out there. The answers are out there for free, right? If you're just like, I don't want to get a I don't want to get a coach or mentor okay, that's fine. You don't want to spend the money. You can do it yourself, but you're going to have to put in, it's either time or money. You're going to have to put in the time of listening to multiple podcasts to maybe hear the nugget that you're looking for, or you can hire somebody to expedite that time frame. They can give you the exact nugget, right? It's one or the other, but also keep this in mind. If you're a salesperson, okay, and you're trying to sell a, a service or a product and you're not willing to pay for a service or product to make you better, that might be why you're having problems with sales because you're not a buyer either. I'm just saying. So one of my friends, Jeff Janakovo always says you, 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 you buy like you sell. And if you're one of the things that I've always said, if you're considering a mastermind, don't join a mastermind unless the mastermind leader belongs to other masterminds don't hire a business coach or a sales coach unless they have a business coach they have a sales coach because it's a hypocrisy that is too big to ignore mm. the fact that they don't believe but they want your money that is a flat out no non-starter for me and <clears throat> i was told that many years ago and I didn't quite get it, but after hiring some coaches, being in some masterminds, all of my mastermind leaders, all of my coaches, all referred to their coaches. And so here's my, the one thing I'd like to say to all of you store owners and you sales reps, if you want to go faster, hire a business or a sales coach. If you want to go faster, join a mastermind. You will go faster, but only join a mastermind or hire a coach who he or she himself has a business coach, has a sales coach. Then they're true believers and they have a lot that they can bring to you. So they can bring it to you fast. They can see things more clearly. And one of the things most of my successful reps that listen to this podcast, most of my successful store owners that listen to this, you guys are already way ahead of everybody else. And you're probably already doing most of this, but your willingness to open your mind to the fact that there is a better way and a faster way is the very first step. And then following up on it and actually taking that step, you will go faster than you ever thought you could go. And uh, the funny thing about it is it becomes funner. I mean, and nobody understands that unless they've had a business coach or a sales coach or, you know, so much. So when you own your own business, you're alone. You're alone because most of the time people that are underneath you that you're paying money, they're just, they're, they'll tell you anything. They just want to make you happy so that you keep paying them money. No one's going to tell you the truth unless you hire somebody to tell you the truth who doesn't have a vested interest in uh, 
anything other than help and make you better. And that perspective is incredibly, incredibly enlightening. I mean, it was right underneath your nose and, and like you literally will laugh and probably cry at the same time when you go, holy crap, I didn't see that. I, it was right there. Why didn't I see that? It's just a matter of perspective. So I'm a big believer in hiring coaches and joining masterminds. And uh, I'm sorry, I'm taking all the wind out of the show because no. when you said that, I just wanted to kind of fully develop it a little bit more, unpack it just a little bit more. And I love this connection that you made with physical activity. Um, I love daily reading. I think it's huge. Everybody who I've ever come to respect had a book in their hand when they're on an airplane and they're reading the book. And it's like, that's somebody who's serious. Every president of a company who was really good, every VP of sales that I've ever met who was really good, they always had a book. They were always reading a book. They're always trying to get better. I mean, that, do you want to be around people who are trying to get better? Or do you want to be a, around half asses like I was when I first started? <laughs> yeah, it's, it, and it's, it, it just, it's the daily, getting over the daily monotony of doing those basic things, right? It's not that they're challenging. Working out is, yeah, you get sore, but everyone's worked out before, right? Like I, I would hope, uh, done some kind of physical exercise. It's not that it's that challenging and everyone knows what the feeling's like. When you go to the gym, you may not want to do it. When you get it out, you feel great. You're like, dude, I'm so glad I did that. Like you feel better because it relieves it endorphins and dopamine in your body and it relieves stress, right? Then you feel accomplished. It's the monotony of having to do it day in and day out constantly. But that teaches you some very valuable skills, which can be translated to your business. The, the skill of delayed gratification, the skill of, ha of having to do something that you may not want to do, but you know is necessary. And if you look at your, your business right now, you probably have some things that you're putting off that you know you need to do, but you don't want to do. There's almost with any business owner, with any sales representative, there's probably something in your business today that you, that you know you need to do, but you've been putting off because you don't want to do it. And when you get used to doing that in your daily life, it gets easier to do it in your business. Mm. Wow. And, and so that's why I'm, I'm a big proponent of it. Uh, you, and you're absolutely right. I, I was actually, I did a, I did a reel on this. Um, man, it was, it was probably about three, two months ago. Um, I was on a, I was on a plane. I go, I go to Tampa very often and I was on a plane going to go see my kids. And uh, I noticed that uh, when I was in the plane, I was reading and someone made a comment about me reading They're like, oh, what's your book here? What, what book you're reading? I told them and they asked me what it was about. And I told them and uh, I looked around and I went to his bathroom and all I saw were screens up of, like every single person on the plane was looking at a screen watching TV. And I was thinking, I was like, man, if everyone here took this time, this is just basically a two hour flight that's open. What could you get accomplished in two hours? Like for me, I was able to read a book, but I was taking notes while I read that book in my phone and I was taking notes and I literally created like two weeks worth of content ideas from the reading I was doing in that two hours, right? Yeah, 100%. Which is, which is like, like how many people would be able to get forward in their business, whether or their side hustle or whatever, if they took uh, the advantage of those time frame opportunities? It's like, well, I'm on a plane. Well, why don't you get to work? Instead of watching a rerun of some stupid show on the free Wi-Fi you get on the on the, <laughs> on the plane, yeah. or some stupid movie that you really don't care about because there's a, there's a limited selection, how about you get to work, right? Mm. It's not hard, but then they're like, "Well, you know, I just want to relax." Man, come on, you know what? It's it like it's just overcoming that voice in your head that that says, "Oh, you should know what? You should relax. You should go ahead and hit the snooze button. You you worked hard last. You stayed up late last night. You've been working hard. You can you you can stop your dials right now because you've already hit your quota for dials." You know, it's it's that voice in our head that gets us to to step off the gas and just be shy of chasing excellence. And we tell ourselves that it's enough, and it's not. 
And that's why I think why, why businesses fail or why they go down in profits. Yeah. You know, it's very interesting what you just said. And I, I just want to unpack it just, just a slight little bit, maybe put a little different twist on it. If someone says to me, Pete, what led to your biggest successes? I would say this fighting for every minute of productivity that I could. I've listened to hundreds, if not thousands of books on audible. Uh, I've listened to hundreds of podcasts when I'm driving in my car and I drive my car 50 to 60,000 miles a year. I don't know what that translates into hours on the road. If I'm not on the phone with a dealer or one of my manufacturers, I'm listening to something to make me better. And usually it's something to do with bringing more value to my customers. So I spent a lot of time on marketing and advertising because the number one problem my store owners have is making that door swing. And so I can help them make their door swing because of the education that I have received. But I fought for all those minutes. And, and so if you're a sales rep, you know, you need to listen to podcasts. You need to listen to audio books. You need to fight for every minute of productivity. If you're a store owner, I know it gets tough. I know, but you got to get to the store an hour early, keep everything locked up so that you don't get interrupted and knock out the most important things that you've got to get out of the way and fight for those minutes you know, fight for that 20 minute walk. First thing in the morning, get your butt up and walk for 20 minutes. And then the next day, maybe it's a half an hour. And before you know it, you're going to start to make the time because this is what happens. You start feeling better. And when it comes to, to nutrition, guys, you know what? By now, you know what to do. You, you know not to eat sugar. You know not to eat processed foods. You know you need to eat some good uh, vegetables, you need to eat some lean proteins and you need to stay away from crap. Everybody knows that. Just start off with drinking enough water. Start drinking 50 ounces of water and then get up to a hundred ounces of water every day. And what happens is you crowd a lot of those cravings out. Your cravings for sugar will almost go away when you get enough water and you eat enough lean protein. Most of that will go away, but it's step by step. And it's not, er, everything doesn't have to be done all at one time. Mm. We, we're we touching on something that's super important. And I know that you're a big fan of it because when I go to your website, I see you talking about discipline. And I see you talking about discipline, starting off a step at a time and increasing your discipline and your discipline over your physical fitness and your discipline to read something out of a good book every day translates to discipline. You can't have discipline in certain areas of your life and it doesn't carry over. It does. Mm -hmm. It no, does it's, carry it's, over. It's and, that, and that's why I said earlier, you know, how you do one thing is how you do all things. If you lack discipline, let's say that you go into, um, into, uh, the Kroger, right? Or you're going to Walmart, you're going to the grocery store and you're walking through the, the parking lot and you see there's a shopping cart that's sitting right there in the middle of the parking lot and you walk right by and you do nothing, right? Well, that tells me if I were to see that from afar, I'd be like, that's a lazy person because you walked by a problem that you could have fixed, right? And, yeah. and most people are like, well, I didn't put it there. So what? It's still a danger to other cars that are in the parking lot. What if it rolled just far enough to hit your car, right? You'd, you'd be upset. But most people just, they, they think they're so tunnel vision, like, well, I didn't do it on to fix it. Well, let's look at the gym. Like I see, I see people all the time. They'll put, they'll take weights and they'll, uh, they won't re-rack their weights and they'll leave them there for somebody else. And it's just like, dude, like <laughs> take the time to go re-rack your weights. Like, because how you do one thing is how you do all things. If you, if you bypass a problem, you don't fix it. That means you're going to do that in other areas of life. If you ignore your new, your nutrition, when you know the right thing is, to eat nutritious in order to have a healthy lifestyle so that you can have a, a long sustained life, right? But you're still eating shit food. 
you know what's right you know what's wrong but you're doing what feels good for you you're going to do that in your business like you're going to do it in your business when those same feelings come up it's like well i could do this which is going to benefit me or i could do this which is going to be a little bit harder and it's going to benefit my employees my clients whatever but i'm not gonna get as much benefit i'm telling you right now you're probably gonna pick the things that are benefit you more then you wonder why your business is where it's at and so what where that all comes down to is is discipline it's it's having the discipline to make the decisions on a daily basis and i'm I, I, being prior military i'm fascinated with the military you know can we just acknowledge and see that the that every single service they could take anybody from any walk of life from any part of the united states no matter what their backgrounds are how big or how small they are whatever limiting beliefs and they can put them all at the same location at basic training and they can retrain their brain break them down to base and retrain their brain to become warriors on the battlefield and go fight wars for our country no matter who it is right amen and, and so that's because discipline can be taught to anybody and how do they do it they do it by um controlling all variables and they have an external accountability source right so they control the variables they control when you go to sleep and when you get up they control what you eat they control that you do physical activity every single day they control what you learn and that you're reading they control that you have no alcohol how much water you're drinking they make sure that you clean etc so these are all basic things right these basic things being clean working out eating healthy reading daily that's what they do in basic training literally to to turn people into war fighters right so then they have an external accountability source the drill sergeant that forces it that is the external accountability source that actually drives internal habit so that it becomes habitual not not everyone does it become habitual because it's hard it depends on the person some people come out of base training i promise you everyone that graduates is a different person some people revert back to their old ways but a lot of people keep that discipline and so it's like well how how can i build discipline in my life well let's start off with some simple stuff how about you start cleaning up your how about you clean your bedroom when you wake up how about you how about you start drinking water like pete was saying how about you read a little bit every day how about you do some workouts if if i were to say reading workout you know eating nutritious and everything i i'm, I'm talking about an hour and a half out of your day an hour and a half it's and when you really break it down it's really not that much we waste an hour and a half doing all kinds of nonsense scrolling on our phones going through social media um watching tv you name it right having conversations with people that are pointless like, <laughs> like just 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 tr trying to seem like we're busy and like we're doing productive stuff but we're we're gossiping we're talking about stuff that's not important that doesn't move the needle forward mm. you know and so you start with some basic things so what i do is like with most people is like start with one of those things right if you're a messy person, start cleaning your bedroom every single morning. Just do it. Just clean your bedroom, make your bed. Over time, that'll become easier. It's, it's it becomes second nature. And then you you when you change that, and you you're no longer you like you might see yourself as like oh I'm just a I'm just a messy person, right? You're not a messy person. It's just the title you've given yourself, but that's how you see yourself. Well, when you start making your bed every day. Eventually, you start cleaning your room, and then you're gonna start cleaning more places around you because it feels good. It's actually healthy for us mentally to be in clean spaces and so you're gonna start cleaning stuff and so that thought of like oh well, i'm just a dirty person is like no i wasn't i used to be dirty and now i'm not right so you're changing the way that you view yourself through small discipline action and it's just that you do it every single day right that's where the discipline is built that you haven't compromised is there, is there going to be days that you wake up and you really don't want to make your bed yes but you don't compromise on that and you make it anyways so you always factor in i got to get up enough time to make my bed i promise you that simple act right there will change the way that you view yourself if you're not already doing this if you're already doing it then do something else okay you can start reading as soon as you wake up Right. I, I like to I like to read when I a little bit after I wake up, like right after. Uh read and meditate. It's just I find that my mind's more open in the morning. So that's my zone of genius times when I can absorb more information and then actually apply it at a future date. So Greg, somebody that's watched us for the last hour and they said, I want to talk to this guy. How do I get a hold of this? this guy this guy is making a lot of sense and i have some questions for him mm -hmm. how do people get a hold of you uh, the best way honestly uh find me on instagram i'm gregory a birch underscore 
Um, I put a lot of content out on Instagram and on Facebook, um, you know, and my LinkedIn, but uh, Instagram is probably the best place to find me. So um, you can, you can reach out to me or if you go to that, the site you were just showing is Delta Fit Life. There's a, there's a uh, link on there. It's a schedule at the top. Um, and if you click that, it brings you to another page. And, uh, on that page, you can actually schedule time just to speak with me. So if you have any questions about your current physical fitness regimen or, uh, your nutrition, your mindset, you just want to have a call, let's schedule a call. Let's have a chat. See if I can even help. I, 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 at the, at, at the least I'll be able to give you some really good, Hey, here's a strategy going forward. This is what I would do in your position, right? Is I would do this, this, that, the other. You know, and if you have any other questions, let me know. I'd love to help. Awesome. Greg, thank you. Thank you for your service. And thank you for making a difference uh, with both of your businesses. And thank you for uh, talking about things that sometimes people don't want to talk about. Discipline, um, mindset, and doing the little things. So thank you so much. appreciate you. Pete, appreciate you. Thank you so much for having me on. Take care. Have a great day. Thanks. Bye.